Cool. All right, guys. Um, so I have a very special guest on today. This is OG Badger, um, somebody that I had known who he was for, for a pretty long time um, before I actually got to meet him in person. I met him at an event, I don't know, a couple months ago in the Valley. Um, Big Herc was there. Sinister was there. And um, he was doing a live. I jumped on it for a second. I don't know. Um, but we've been meaning to collaborate on some videos for a while. I just did one for his channel, and now he's kind enough to do one for mine. So without further ado, OG Badger. Hey, thanks for having me on the show, you know. Um, I don't exactly know what you want to do the format on, so lay out what you want to do. Tell me what we're, where we're at. Well, I, you know, I think it should be pretty similar to what we did when we uh, recorded before. Eventually, I want to start talking more about YouTube stuff, but let's talk a little bit about your, I mean, just, just tell me about some of your experiences in prison specifically. That's one thing that, I mean, one of many things that we both have in common, but, um, you know, I think we had two very different prison experiences. As I touched on when I was on your channel, I came into prison a spoiled little brat with entitlement issues. And I was a an asshole, you know, I was a pretentious asshole. And I was humbled very quickly in there, as we had talked about in that video. And really, I I don't have, I'm an only child, so I didn't have any siblings. I didn't have older brothers, but I'd always had you know, kind of like the old, I was a skater kid. So I was at the older skater kids kind of acting as older brothers in my neighborhood, but I didn't have the kind of upbringing where like, if I got in trouble, my dad disciplined me physically in, in, in any degree. So I, I was in for a rude awakening when I got to prison and I started fucking up being a dope fiend. And, uh, I got humbled very quickly, as we said. So I want to know what your experience was like compared to mine. So, yeah, um, I didn't have anybody really to look out for me. You know what I mean? So it was, uh, so this is how it started. I was sort of a, a grandma's kid. You know what I mean? I just showed you a picture of my grandma holding me, you know, when I was just a pup. Um, and... I didn't have a mean bone in my body really at the time, you know, to be honest with you. I'd gotten them, uh, you know, fight, been in a couple fights here and there. Um, but then I find myself in the county, oh, I went to juvenile hall a couple times and fuck that place, you know what I mean? It, it was a rough one there. Silmar Juvenile Hall is nothing nice. Adobe Mountain in Kingman, Arizona, nothing nice. You know, I, I got in trouble in Arizona and, uh, I dodged that penitentiary out there. And I guess their politics are basically our politics, you know? Um, <clears throat> so I didn't understand about going into a man's cell and asking to sit on his bed. You know, that's something you definitely do or in a dorm environment, in a county jail, it's a lot of dorms. Uh, so I didn't know about asking to sit on someone's bed, you know, like, hey, homie, you know, it's always respectful. And don't sit at the fucking head of my bed, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I had been abracadabbered a couple of times myself, you know what I mean? Lump here, lump there. Um, I remember I eyeballed somebody's cell and I grabbed something that wasn't mine in their cell. I was like, oh, you got coffee, bro? Or whatever it was, you know what I mean? And next thing you know, I'm fucking like cleaning up blood off my eye, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, what are you touching shit in my cell for, homes? We're here to conduct business and get the fuck out of here, you know what I mean? And, and I didn't realize you weren't supposed to be eyeballing what other people had, you know? And I learned I got humbled, too, in a few situations, um, which made my experience a little bit fucking sickening, you know? I went to county jail for driving on a suspended license, 14601, you know what I mean? And uh, what's the next charge I get? No. What, <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, Continue. I, I have some questions I want to ask you about that, but just keep going. Let me yeah. let's hear what you. So, and my next charge, next time I was at booking front, it was for one eighty seven. You know, um, talk about fucking sickening feeling. You know, uh, so there's that right there. And my, now, don't get me wrong. In the beginning, I had grandma. You know, what I mean, fucking riding to court fucking i'll be like ah, i don't show up at court after you know 18 months of back and forth going to court i'm just like telling her don't come to court 
I wouldn't even state what my court dates were because she'd get up, God bless her, um, put on her best queen's way to fashion clothing and put on her bright lipstick and, you know, she'd show up there like rah, 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 you know, and uh, it did feel good to have somebody on my team, bro, you know, like it did feel good, but in the same time, I realized what a piece of shit I was being having her showing up to court you know what i mean now i couldn't tell her that it was just the two of us in the cell you know what i mean i couldn't tell her these things that this really did occur you know like the way they're saying it and i had to uh let her know that it was basically a me or him situation you know and at some point it was you know i mean at that you know i guess from the beginning it was so what i had uh not minded my own business once again you know, I went through somebody's paperwork. I seen what their charges were and I freaked out and got to uh, running and bumping my gums, you know, and I put myself in a position to, you know, lose a fucking huge portion of my life, man. You know, I say lose it, but like we were talking back on our video that, you know, after the first couple calendars, it was just program. It was life. You know what I mean? It, it, lo and behold, it's here. You know, um, the one thing I always, I remember coming out here, I, I was in more fear on the streets with all the movement going on around me than inside. Inside, I learned to fucking work the whole fucking yard, you know, uh, I'd know what was going down before it was going down. You, you, it's like, uh, like you said, like watching the weather change. If you see so many people collecting or whatever, you know, it's not a good thing, you know, especially when you're allowed to travel three to a per three to a car, you know, uh, anything more than three people, they break it up. So if you see, you know, 15 and then 45 and then 90 you know i mean all of a sudden gathering up you know it's going down so coming out here with all the movement you know you hear about people oh the car alarm went off and he dropped to the ground well i felt like that all the time bro i was uh uh what's the word i'm looking for like i was nervous all the time bro always nervous because i i couldn't control anything around me um just nothing you know what i mean the, and the, the respect level out here was off the hook you know what i mean and people with their entitlement issues cutting you off and fucking not saying excuse me or you know just brushing past you or bumping into you and all this shit i just was not well up here i remember when i first got out my mom took me to get ice cream from thrifties and the dude said something to my mom and i felt it was total disrespect like can you wait a minute you know what i mean something like that and when he came over, I snatched him up. Mind you, I was a hog when I got out. You know what I mean? I snatched him up over the counter. I go, you ever speak to my mother like that again? You know what I mean? And my mom's like, what the fuck? So I had become institutionalized or prison bound up here. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't letting shit slide, but I didn't have anybody looking out for me, you know? And therefore I had to do what I had to do in there. I mean, I extortion and it was always generally friendly extortion, you know what I mean? And start off friendly. If uh, five of the homies were eating a spread over there, I'd tell the dude, I'd be like, look, bud, these dudes ain't liking you. I got it covered, you know what I mean? But you are gonna have to look out for me to make sure that they're taken care of and, you know, and shit like that. And they weren't, they didn't even know I was using them as an extortion tool. You get what I'm saying? They're just spreading. And I'd just be like this, like, and you always, you, everybody that goes in there gets heart checked to some degree, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't do prison time without getting, getting checked. It doesn't matter how tough you are. You're going to be in um, situations where you're going to get tried, and a lot of times it, it kind of goes against common sense. Some of the biggest, baddest looking people get tried by people that aren't the biggest right. baddest looking people because they want to be perceived as that you know that whole cliche uh so you're not immune to that if you're some big i'm five foot six i'm a midget i'm not intimidating anybody and i had to learn to carry myself like i was six four um just so that i could be taken somewhat seriously and we had talked about in the other video i mean i was essentially a clown in prison 
and I would befriend the toughest guy I could and just make him laugh all the time. And therefore they kind of let stuff slide. What I wanted to ask you when you were talking about when you first got busted for driving on a suspended and then um, when you got your major charge, um, what time period was that and where was this was in the San Fernando Valley in the yeah, 90s? Was county jail, 80s. 80s. Yeah, yeah, 84. So let me ask you something. Um, I wasn't around, I mean, I was born in 85. So, <laughs> but I did spend a lot of time in prison reading prison books, you know, which is kind of weird. It's like, it's kind of like when you're in jail or when you're in prison and people are watching cops on TV, people are, you're like, well, what do you, what do you guys want to watch? Oh, let's watch dudes get busted. Yeah. Well, why would you want to watch that? I don't know. It's cool. It's cool about that. That sucks. <laughs> you know? Um, but, um, I would read a lot of prison books and I'm aware that particularly in the California state system, the 1980s and the 1990s, I'd say were probably more violent and more hardcore than they are now. Would you say that that's true? Brutal, bro. Brutal. Mm. Especially the county jail, the size of them crypts back then. Good God. You know what I mean? Like, I was celled with two Grape Street crypts, and they were 17. They just came over from YA, and you never see nothing that big at 17, 18 years old. You know what I mean? just like fucking brutal bro and the mentality the mentality was fuck a white boy you know what i mean that believe that you know we didn't get we run with the mexicans till you get to the joint you know um yeah i got checked a lot bro people fucking trying to heart check me and you know i i mean i got a bald head you know right then they're gonna be like fucking dirt and you know it's funny you say I'm five foot, whatever, fucking checking, you know, six foot eight motherfuckers. But that's true. That's how it goes. You know, usually it's a little guy that'll come check you, you know what I mean? Or try and fucking run game on you or something and let you know that his people got him. You know what I mean? So, and my motto back then was always get yours in first. You know what I mean? So like if that was going to happen and I felt, that the, he was being backed i'm just getting him right then and there i'm not going to be talking about it we're not going to be discussing fucking wages or nothing you know i've been i've been in more facilities for seconds or minutes before i can had time to make a bet i'm out of there because some of that shit would go down you know what i mean and come on and be like fucking hey who you run with on me you know what i mean well, Savis K, Savis K, this you know what i mean just get busy. so and the old fucking uh what size shoes are them, homie? You know what I mean? My motherfucking size, you know? Like, all that shit was going on, bro. You Don't come in there wearing some brand new white shoes because you're not leaving with them, you know what I mean? And I'm not the toughest guy around. And you know, if you ain't meant to win a fight in there, you ain't going to win that fight, you know what I mean? They got a saying, uh, 40 on one is fun when you ain't the one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... And that's how it goes down. And it was brutal back then, bro. 9,500 was literally hell on earth. And now I hear it's a, a, a trustee dorm or something. So we'd have like 10 bunks over by the toilets, the nastiest fucking foulest place you ever been, right? That's our little the white section, you know? And then the other 600 beds were others, you know what I mean? And that's about all the whites there were in there, you know? Uh, 10, 10 bunk beds full. So 20 people to whatever, um, it was fucking horrible. Yeah, the 80s. So yeah, it was very violent back then. Um, you, you really didn't stand a chance. If you weren't going to, if you knew you were going to be extorted, you either tucked and fold or you got busy from the gate and then fucking your reputation would perceive you. You know what I mean? You, you'd show up in the next place lumped up. Be like, man, I just went through this. We're going to do it again. You know what I mean? And it was like, oh, all right, homie. You know what I mean? Like, you come at somebody with, uh, with the knowledge of how you're coming at them. You know what I mean? Like, fucking, I'm not the guy. You know, fucking, yeah, you're going to beat my ass, but that's how it's going to go down. You know what I mean? You ain't getting my shit. You know, because that's how it was. Robberies fucking on a regular. If you were white in there, you were fucking being robbed, extorted, or something. So the 80s and 90s were fucking rough, bro. Um, the reason 
all the all the clicks became so big you know the brand the ama and the fucking bgf uh the cribs was whatever was back then in the in the penal system itself not so much in the county jail mind you but in the penal system itself a murderer carried 18 months in the shoe you know what i mean it wasn't even a da referral once you hit the joint it was just nhi no humans involved and you know like that's how it was they they wouldn't da reject you now you fucking spit on somebody in there you're getting a da referral you know it's just it wasn't like that and the cops were even worse bro being white fucking they hated us man you're ashamed you're ashamed of our race you know what i mean fucking we're supposed to be on this side the cops were like that you know all that wayside shit was going on the white hands the cops I don't know if you heard about it. No, that was like the, that's the, right. when they were like a gang and they were pretty they much were going at it with <laughs> gangs and, and, but they were a cop gang and they were just, you know, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I, my, I, I have friends that were doing time um, in the 90s in Santa Barbara County Jail. And like, if you had a problem with a cop, you could go heads up with the cop in a stairwell. And like, that's not something that's not true. I've heard it from dozens of people that were doing time back then. They're like, no, no, no. We could just go in the stairwell. If you got a problem, what's up? Let's go. Heads up. Whoever wins, nobody's getting charged. And that's it. Because the cops were carrying themselves like inmates back then, like convicts. I didn't see that so much in the county, to be honest with you. But in the joint, even before, just before I left, you know, uh, it was sort of like that. You could still get down with a CO, you know what I mean? In the sheriff's, I didn't so much see that. You may be able to lure one to a, a, a spot, bro, but fucking when you get over there, there's going to be six of his buddies peeling your dumb. And they're going to smash you out. Well, and what, what was that thing that happened? It was pretty recent. I mean, it was in, within like the last 10 years, I want to say. And there was so much corruption going on in L.A. County Jail. I mean, yeah. like I told you before, I've been through there. Um, I got arrested at the Commerce one time. And I had a warrant from Santa Barbara so that they put me in Supermax to extradite me up there. And it was, it was wild in there for sure. I mean, it was like uh, more lawless than prison, you know, and L.A. County is rocking and rolling. You know, they'd have people, uh, you know, guarding the pods, shit like that. It was, it was pretty wild. I remember they had burritos and they had these like vending machines. I don't know if they still have that stuff in L.A. County, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it was a, it was a pretty rocking and rolling spot from what I've seen from different places I've been. But I heard that um, within like the last 10 years, it was so corrupt there that the FBI was like, you know what, we're going to infiltrate LA County jail and see what's up. So they, they pat an FBI agent, pretend like they were an inmate. They go in there. They fucking lost the inmate for like two months. They lost the FBI agent. They couldn't find him. And that's why LA County jail got cracked whoever was the sheriff at that time just got it was okay. a really big scandal right when was that you know what i'm talking about Baca. yeah yeah lee Baca was the sheriff yeah yeah he's he, you know what he said his son's a drug addict too right so he was like fucking he said this on television bro i think that's what got him reinstated but he said uh line up all the drug addicts and fucking kill him you know i don't remember exactly how he used it the terminology but and it, one of the news reporters said well isn't your son a drug addict and he goes put him in line too you know what i mean like fucking he wasn't having it baka was no joke bro. yeah no i i mean and then in the federal on the federal level because you know i'm a fed baby you know there's the state babies and then there's the fed baby that's so why i guess i'm the proverbial um fed baby but in the feds, they had something similar. They had something called the Cowboys. Um, there were some guys that were based out of Florence, Colorado. They were basically a gang of federal COs that would go at it with convicts. And they got in trouble. And I know they've done this at a lot of state prisons oh, in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they're the guys that were like gambling on people, fighting in the hole. You know, it's like they'd yeah, put, they'd have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were doing it at court. Yeah, I heard they did it at court too. Yeah. They did these guys, the Cowboys, they did that. And then I know they did it on the state level. But yeah, they'd have people that were going to the hole and they had like some underground illicit gambling circuit where they're like, they're like, let's put money on this. Let's watch this big black guy fight this big white guy. And, you know, they'd gamble on it and they got cracked for it. Pretty interesting uh, how corrupt it is. 
Same thing happened to Lieutenant Rodriguez. You know what I mean? They feds came in and fucking cuffed him up, bro. I was a wild day. You know what I mean? People tell me to quit talking about it, but that's a huge part of my life. You know, being in your cell scared every day, they're going to put you out there with blacks and you, you can't program on the same yard as blacks. You know what I mean? They take two whites, two blacks and drop them out on the yard. Gunner would, you know what I mean? Locked and loaded. Um, uh, like I said, one of my cellies was killed, a 19-year-old kid, you know, they ended up killing his dome, and I've often, often wondered why he chose him that day, you know what I mean, and as far as I'm concerned, he got a break, you know, because he had life, he was doing life at 19, you know, and uh, they sent his mom a fucking a bill for the bullet, $2.32, <laughs> his mama bill for the boy i heard they used to do that that's insane mm -hmm. and you know i remember you know in federal prison it's i think it's a little more civilized i mean don't uh, people underestimate that the federal system can be cracking like there's some crazy shit going on in the feds too but one thing that i noticed like a very like stark contrast between federal prison and state prison when i got to state prison i think it was in wasco where i saw but it would say like on the wall warning, there's no, no warning, warning shots shot. no warning shots like they'll just shoot you they don't even yeah, have guns right here on my fucking waistline <laughs> it says no warning shots yeah. <laughs> warning, warning shots. <laughs> um and uh yeah it's like it, it's, it's it's more it's almost like you're in the wild animal kingdom in state prison and state prison was really really violent i got in 12 melees in there and I wanted to ask you that while we were talking, there's a couple of things, excuse me, there's a couple of things that we had talked about when we were doing the video on your channel that I think are important to talk about on this channel, just in case people miss it. But one thing um, that, that I was touching on and I wanted to ask you to go a little bit more in depth into it. Um, when I first started doing time, as I mentioned, the white guys, the woods that pretty much adopted me as a surrogate little brother, saw me as kind of like a spoiled little rich kid brat a uh, little asshole kid but instead of taking advantage of me instead of doing friendly extortion on me which occurred a little bit you know but for the most part they guided me and they schooled me and they told me how to carry myself correctly and you know years later it ended up saving me in a lot of situations because i had the ability to make good calls myself and i also had the ability to know exactly when to stay in my lane when i absolutely had to and i played the part when i needed to but i could navigate the system to a large degree then later as i because i you know i've been to prison three times now um on my most recent term i noticed that there's been a pretty dramatic shift in the way that prison politics um, are being enforced in and you know there's a lot of favoritism you know it's like if you're a popular guy in the wood pile they let certain stuff slide but if you're just some guy that, that, that doesn't have a lot of friends they just you get fucked off but my point is is i started noticing that when younger kids come in that aren't as schooled when you know when they're green when they're new fishes when they come into prison now it seems that people are a lot less about schooling them and teaching them how to do things the correct way and it's become more predatory like let's see what the fuck we can get off this in my 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 opinion on it <clears throat> just kind of observing it from an outside in and inside perspective is that uh, it's dope fiend politics now, you know, that the crystal meth and the black tar heroin that's going into these prisons is making people make calls based off drugs instead of based on what's proper for the peace of the, of the system. Uh, Let me tell you this too, though, that you pay the price for that too. You know what I mean? You make a, a dope fiend judgment call. You know what I mean? The higher ups are going to make sure that you know that you made a wrong call. You know, um, you were, that's old school shit, what they did with you. You know what I mean? That was how it's supposed to be. That's why I clicked up when I was inside because it was more of, and we didn't fucking beat our week. You know what I mean? We didn't do all that shit, you know, uh, until Nazi lowriders started doing all their shit. It was always a fucking pull them up. Don't kick them down, you know? And it didn't matter, you know, five foot two or eight foot eight. It didn't matter because... 
like I said, eight foot eight, that's just fucking send a couple more guys. You know what I mean? Like the job gets done. So if it's one guy that needs to beat one guy, then it could be dealt like that. If it's just a beating, you know what I mean? But if dude's huge, send more guys. You're not going to win. They're not going to win, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, thank God I, too, had – and on the upper yards, it's that way. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of uh, schooling because you're going to be around for a while, man. You know what I mean? Like fucking – and it's your job to fucking pay it forward too, definitely. So instead of being quick to fucking, uh, no, I say I've extorted people. Let me let you know this first and foremost. They fucked up in some way. You get what I'm saying? They didn't of course, just, yeah. I didn't just prey on people because they looked weak or something. They had fucked up in some way. So, um, and I hate a predator. You know what I mean? Like, but I, and I've been a predator. You know, I'm not going to lie. So, but usually, thank God I too had, you know, I, Skinhead Paul, you know what I mean? Rest in peace. He, uh, he pulled me under his wing and he did the same for me. You know what I mean? And, and then when your car sees that somebody's investing time in you, they all invest time in you. But then when you fuck up, you know what I mean? Then you're answering to the whole car too. So, cause they've all put time invested in you. So yeah, man, like, it has become dope fiend. Same thing with county jail. It's become soft. My homeboy was just in there and he goes, um, some dude uh, told the cop, man, fuck you. You know what I mean? And my homeboy looked over like fucking, whoa, dude's about to get smashed out. And the cop was like, sir, I'm not speaking to you that way. I'd prefer if you <laughs> Uh, back in the day, that's not how they would have done Johnny it. Johnny shit his pants. He's like, back in the way, it's like six years ago. <laughs> it's like different, you know? No, oh, yeah, man. You don't speak to the sheriffs like that. Like, I knocked a sheriff out once, and it sucked too, bro, because he happened to be a little guy. That was all bad for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> At least he'd been a big guy. He probably wouldn't have been put to sleep when I hit him. But. It was bad for me from that day forward for a long time in the county jail, bro. Them cops fucking shuffled me, beat me. I was on the 7,000th floor in the submarine tanks where they just close a, a window. You know, there's, you have a square window and they just flip that thing over. And when they shut the lights off, there's even a lip at the bottom of the floor. So there's fucking zero light coming in there, bro. And they would leave that, they shut that light off and left me in there for like a straight week, man, according wow. to meals. Wow, you know? that's crazy. I, it was brutal, bro. The fucking, oh my God, thinking back on that right now, it was fucked up. And every night the door, would you'd hear the keys going in the door and I'd know it was ass whooping time, you know? So, and I got a, caught an ass whooping almost every night for at least a week. I was fucked up for a while. I couldn't breathe correct, in the dark, fucking trying to find the pisser. You know what I mean? By then, I learned to navigate around the cell, but it was a long time in there, bro. It felt like a years and years, but it was only probably close to a week, I'm going to guess, by meals. You know what I mean? So. And in, in what you're talking about where, um, you know, people take off on a cop or people talk shit to a cop, um, that can go really – I know a guy got killed at Victorville because – I don't know, you know, the, I guess a cop was hitting a cell, took something, who knows what he took, a stinger or something, something petty. Yeah. And the guy's just like, fuck you, you pig, you know, talking shit to the cop. And the cop's like, okay. So they came and shook down the entire unit. And what happened is the South Siders had a bunch of wine because it was about to be New Year's. So this guy didn't end up, he didn't go to the hole for talking shit to the cop, but he got the whole spot shaken down. So they decided to remove this guy. It was like five kids on one and they stomped him out and they killed him, you know, and they didn't mean to kill him. That's definitely not what the point of it was. It was a bunch of kids that just raised their hand and they're like, I want to beat people up. What's up? I want to be, I want respect in prison. And three of those people, um, they caught, I want to say they caught 40 years behind that, 40 years in uh, the feds yeah. for That's it. That's the um, oldest story in the book right there, bro. Mm -hmm. It happens almost, you know, daily in there. You know what I mean? I can't say daily, but it happens pretty much. It's regular. common. Yeah, it's common. It's a common thing. So it can go two ways. And it's like, I'm not ever saying that I advocate just to fucking beat up cops. But it's like, if you, as you said, if you feel strongly enough about it, it you definitely shouldn't just talk to the cop. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. if you're not willing to hit him, 
then you're going to get in trouble. For, and even if you hit him, sometimes that can fuck stuff up. And it, it's so it's a very delicate world that you need to learn how to navigate in very quickly. Um, and we talked about like, I have ADD. It was so hard for me to learn how to walk with blinders and not look into people's cells. Uh, you know, yeah. I'd be like, damn, that guy's hitting that guy in the neck. He's not, and you know, they'd be like, hey man, don't do that. You're going to get stabbed by those people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those dirty white boys in there pumping on that dude. <laughs> <laughs> the dirty white boys are holding that guy down and butt fucking him, dude. Is that normal? Yeah. Oh yeah. It okay, that happens all the time. But, um, and I want, I, another thing that we talked about that I thought was like a really good point in the other video, not to cross pollinate too much, because I definitely want you guys to watch the um, interview that I did on his channel. But one thing that we talked about that I thought was really um, important to talk about is um, before I went to prison, I was a controlling, jealous J cat when it came to women. I was so paranoid. I, if I, I would think I'm getting cheated on if she's trying on clothes at Nordstrom's or something. I'd be like, you're fucking someone in that stall. And um, Hang on, sorry, bud. Hang go on. ahead. Take it. Hey, Dave. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, listen, is, this is your number right here. I'm doing an interview right now. So I'm going to call you back probably in a half an hour, okay? I appreciate you calling me, Dave. So, all right. Thank you, bud. And that, and that was Dave's tires. Um, the, the link will be in the bio. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so now that's uh, an old friend from Bakersfield, actually. Okay. So, uh, all right. Yeah. Old, old, old Kern County right there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> those Kern County, those guys, hey, say something. I do not <laughs> like Bakersfield as a city, but those guys are a different breed of fucking warriors. Are warriors yeah. bro. <laughs> People from Kern County. Bakersfield, anywhere around there is, are they're going hard straight. They don't do a fuck. Same with Fresno, yeah. dude. Same with Fresnex. Those boys, you know, those guys are, are whoa, those guys are some hardcore people. But um, yeah. what I was going to say is I noticed that, so I was already like that before I went to prison and I was already kind of psycho when it came to like relationships. I'm, I'm not a good boyfriend, husband, when I have a girlfriend, wife, whatever. But, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a little crazy. I, you know, I guess that's inherent insecurities or whatever. But, oh, right, right here. Yeah, me. Me too. Um, I noticed that when I got out of prison, if I thought I was crazy psychopath before prison, when I got out, oh, my God, it, it, my, it, my, my lid blew. I was completely, I've gone, I've, I've just gone completely off the deep end when it comes to women. We were talking about this, and I think it's a very important point because a lot of people that watch our content haven't been to prison. This is my own personal theory on it. I think it's very true. Um, when you go to prison, and we talked about this, um, you know, you hang out with, you have brothers in there. It, they're, they're not like normal friends, you know, not like, like, hey, no. bro, um, let's go yeah. play tennis at the park. All right, I'll be there at, at, at 10. Okay, cool. And then, you know, that's it. You see them like once a week. No, in here, you get to know people if you're doing two, three years. You get to know people in those two, three years uh, better than you know most people. Well, no, definitely better than you know people that you grew up with because you're with them sure. all day, every day. There's no, um, there's no false pretenses. There's no, it's not a facade because in prison, you can't be fake. You know, there's a lot of fake people in prison, but you can't be a liar. You can't be a manipulator without people knowing that that's what kind of person you are. You're get, yeah. People are going to know who you are because everything's out there on the fucking table because you can't escape it. You lie to someone. You're like, yeah, I was an astronaut before I came here. Yeah. Someone's like, hey, dude, Leone said he was an astronaut. Dude's a fucking piece of shit liar. And yeah. you, that reputation goes everywhere it precedes you and it's a very small system whether it be federal or state people people know who you are yeah. you bring your name up you have a reputation you know and um these people you know christmas comes birthdays come um and this is your family you know this is who you know uh, you're giving people commissary items for christmas you're spreading with your boys you're throwing them surprise birthday parties you're making memories because that's all you have in there you have your reputation and you have you have you know your car you have the dudes that that's you're hanging what? out with every day right what's that what what the first to move on you too oh then that's well i was getting to that i was i was yeah. leading up to it like oh these guys are so awesome and then <laughs> listen when you fuck up in prison because you're, these guys are your family, 
but they're the people that have to enforce your fuck ups. So they're the ones that come and stomp you out with boots on. They're the ones that put a combination lock in a sock and crack your skull open. They're the ones that stab you. So what happens is you're in this perpetual hyper awareness where you always know that betrayal can happen with the snap of the fingers. And it's not necessarily over something bad that you did. There's a lot of bad calls in prison and that's just how it is. Sometimes there's no such thing as coincidences in prison. If you look like you're fucked up in there, it doesn't matter if it's not true. Get too many coincidences add up, you're, fu- you're, you're a piece of shit no matter what. And then later, once the smoke clears, people are like, oh shit, we were wrong about that. It was actually that other Sorry, guy, Tom. Bud. Sorry, bro. Sorry about that, that you're paralyzed and that you're in the medical yeah. unit now, but like, oh, we were wrong. Sorry. So what happens is you get out of prison. And also, with that same thing being said, um, I found that one thing I really respect about people in prison is that they treat their girlfriends, they treat their wives like queens because uh, these women are riding for them and they treat them the way they're with the respect. That's how you're supposed to respect your woman. You know, you're supposed to give them the utmost respect. That's your queen. That's the most important person in your life or it should be, you know, besides your kids. And um, when you're constantly seeing betrayal by your own, by the people you trust the most in prison, when you're constantly seeing people literally getting stabbed in the back, what do you think that does to a relationship when you get out of prison? You, if you were paranoid, insecure, and all that shit you. before, you bring it right back with you from prison. And that's what my second book's about, how prison PTSD affected relationships when I got out. Um, that's coming out this summer. But um, I wanted to, since I talk so much about it, what do you think about that particular point? What do you think about... I agree. Uh, you agree? Yeah, absolutely, I agree, you know? Um, so I didn't so much have the relationships, you know, through all that, you know, um, I, I had the hots for a teacher for a minute. We'll just leave it at that. You know what I mean? Uh, they were reciprocated. Um, but I knew what it was. You know what I mean? Like she was probably fucking four other dudes. So I didn't really care. At the you know same I mean? time? Possibly, you know, like I was always scared. There was never a comfortable let's fuck around situation because you get caught in there having sex with the CO in any way, shape, or form. It's a rape charge, for sure. You know what I mean? Because what's she gonna say? Oh, I gave him some. You know what I mean? Like it's a rape charge. Um, but I could uh, I seen so many people losing it, bro, behind their girl. You know what I mean? And like you said, you okay? A, you don't let your girl leave visiting mad. You know what I mean? You don't fucking hang up on her, yelling at her, hanging up on her, because like you said, <laughs> Jody will be over there slamming that night. You know, Sancho, whatever you guys call him, uh, he'll be there slamming that night. And uh, you learn to appreciate. That's what prison did teach me, is appreciation of people, loyalty. You know what I mean? Uh, a bunch of, there's a bunch of things that I learned to appreciate and, and value. And one of those, the most important one is my word and integrity. You know, even if I've been smashed out so many times, bro, you know what I mean? Like I've been fucking, in, you know, it's a rough environment to grow up in. So uh, nowadays, I'll tell you like this, nowadays, it's not like it was back then. Back then you needed to have official fucking paperwork. You know what I mean? Bam. Transcripts right? from your from court, shit like that. Yeah, that was the best kind of paper. Yeah. Official shit, man. You know what I mean? A newspaper article, uh, something, you know? But now I fucked your girlfriend. You know what I mean? And you see me come in and you've been on the yard for a minute. And you you know, you're like, oh, that dude ain't no fucking good, bro. For he could put any kind of jacket he wants on you. I've seen it happen. So many times, you know, when dudes are chomo, it's to where it's not just him getting him, now it's a couple people getting him, you know, and it's all just usually run back, you know what I mean, trying to get, get fucking, at, you know, trying to hurt this individual for what he did to you on the streets. I didn't run into those situations too much because, you know, I didn't have that many incidents on the streets with people. The people I was running with on the streets, they weren't in prison. You know, a couple of them were. I've seen a couple of them throughout the years. One of them is doing, uh... so my best friend, he owns 5150 Tattoos in the Valley. He's doing three life sentences. Um, and then another partner of mine that grew up across the street, he 
uh, he's doing like 121 years or something like that. 100, I think it's exactly 121 years. Um, I can't think right now. Oh, but he's my dog. How does that work in the state? So, um, you know, and it's not like I, I like I said, I've been there, but um, I forget like a hundred and like if if you get a hundred and twenty one years, then what is that? At, that's at eighty five percent. Is what that trend <laughs> is that? Burn, you're gonna no, burn yeah, I know, I know, you, I know yeah. you're, I know you're doing permanent time, but they don't, three, they don't give you an EPRD. I don't believe. Okay, this is why I'm bringing it up. I don't know if you're aware of this because this just started ha- when I was in state prison a couple of new things just started getting um, implemented. Um, First of all, if you're a lifer, you can get family visits now. So, which uh, is a conjugal visit. You can fuck your, um, your girlfriend or your, um, your your wife or or the other. (laughs) Um, You can fuck another. No, it's legal. No. Um, And all that was taken away because some dude killed his, wife right like yeah. e- like any baby. Other- baby killed the baby that's not the only reason that was the fucking that was the what is it the hammer on the head or whatever that was the you know the deciding factor was that he uh, what do you mean he killed the baby what do you mean the baby he, she showed up with a baby that wasn't his oh preg- yeah. pregnant she, right she yeah. was pregnant with yeah and then he she beat her so bad up. No, she showed up with the baby. Oh, okay. And he grabbed it by the ankle and slammed it in the wall. Oh, you know? yeah. So, but here's what else was happening: these broads are showing up, their wives, and they were showing up, and they were uh, all of a sudden popping up with the virus. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, they got HIV due to the fucking the homosexuality going on in the prison system, um, drug use, all that. So many people were getting the virus back then; it wasn't even funny. You know, um, let, hence letting those that were incarcerated find out that they had the virus. You know, I mean, they, a lot of people are slamming dope behind other people, or you know, not so much in our car, but in other racist cars, they're having sex with other people, and then they're giving the the virus to their old ladies. So that was a big factor in deciding that. But when he he did that, he killed the baby and beat the old lady. I mean, before the COs were even on him. Uh, Sacramento was happy to have that happen. It was just like it was almost planned, you know, so they shut down family visiting behind it. Well, family visiting um, is back now. But another thing that's changing, which um, I heard from like the old older convicts in the state system, because, you know, I talked to people and uh, I I talked to the whole every week. And what you know, did you hear that now they're changing certain sentences from 85% to 65%. So those 65% sentences. So what some of these law, like I, I knew, I talked to this guy, he'd been down like, fuck, like 20 years, 25 years, I don't know, whatever it was. And he was actually going home and he said he was never going home before that, but they had changed the law and it went down to 65%. And it's actually retroactive in some instances is what he was telling me anyway. I don't know. I don't have that clear. That's why I'm asking you about it. And what he said yeah. is that they changed it from 85 down to 65%. So because I see people hope. Yeah, get to exactly. I think that's why they do that. And so now they have the family visits and they're changing. Um, the time, so people that have these these you know astronomical sentences, 120 years, sometimes they go down to 65 percent. That's a pretty big significant. Difference. That's big, big oh, yeah. difference. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask my partner. You know, next time he talks, I talk to. Cause I talk to him once a week, twice a week. I, he messages me on Messenger pretty regularly. Hey, what's up? I could probably text him right now and be with the whole. I actually did an interview with him on the phone. You know what I mean? I, let, <laughs> let, I did a live and let everybody ask questions and I would ask him uh, and I, you know, I posted it, uh, you know, I did a live and let him answer all the questions that they had. Um, he's a reality check for me all the time, man. Like, cause I, I've been out here for a minute now and I get ungrateful too. I gotten way ungrateful, way unappreciative of my girl. Um, way unappreciative that I got a soft bed and a nice pillow. You know what I mean? Nice, smooth blankets. I, I've become uh, free and <laughs> You know what I mean? Like I've learned to 
not appreciate everything so much. And he's a reality check for me. A couple of weeks back, maybe a month or two back, uh, oh, it was New Year's. Yeah, he's all, uh, hey, I hope you have a fucking good New Year. I'm like, fuck a good New Year. I was all pumped up thinking, man, I'm going to make this year my year, you know, and blah, blah, blah. I go, fuck a good year. I just want to have a great year. I'm going to have a great year. And he tells me, you know what, Badger? The only thing I can hope for for the remainder of my life is to have an uneventful year. You know, I mean, I'm like, damn, that's sunk in, man. That's heavy shit. You that's, know? that's the absolute truth. Oh, man, for sure. Um, I just, I mean, dude, I, uh, I got off parole today, as we talked about, which yeah. I'm so like, Congrats. you know, for, for, for me, yeah, thank you for, I've been on probation or parole, whether it be county, state, federal for the last 17 years. And this is the first time in the last, just one year, I got out of prison March 25th of last year. So tomorrow I've been out of prison for a year. I did a lot of stuff this year that I'm proud of. Um, being a good father is, is at the absolute top of that list. And right. being a good father for me was st- staying the fuck out of trouble, which in, I wasn't perfect by any means this last year, but um, he, you know, I, I always tried to put him before myself and I didn't always do that. I'm adjusting to having to, sure. or it's not just me type thing, but you know, um, my girl and I'll fight just like anybody fights with their girl and my fight, my girl's got a bad temper and we'll just be screaming at each other, usually over petty stuff. Like today we were fighting cause I lost our debit card in a time of a global pandemic <laughs> where like you shouldn't lose your debit card. Like it's the only way we can buy milk and shit for our kid. And I lost her screaming at each other. And she's like, look through the trash. And I'm like, I don't want to. She's like, you're a pussy. And I'm like, why are you calling me names? You get mad when I call you. Anyway, we're fighting over petty stuff. And once in a while, I, I take pause. And I'm like, look, I remember all those nights when I would call you from federal prison, state prison, wherever it was. And like, and I'd be spitting game like, baby. I would give anything right I'm now dad. I'm a, just, woo, woo. just to be in your loving arms again. Look at this flower. I had a pisa made out of toilet paper and yeah. you know, like it, look at the, <laughs> and um, you know, I used to say stuff like I'd give anything just to be cuddled up watching Netflix with you right now. And now I find many days where that can be a reality, but we want to trip on the dumb shit. And I, I really yeah. got to, I, I got to like really think about it and be like, you know, where was I a year ago? I was taking gr- group showers in state prison right and i miss it i miss it for sure i'm not saying i don't but uh, this one i tell him uh, (laughs) he goes what are you gonna do right now i go well when we hang up i'm gonna go outside and smoke a cigarette he goes hey could you do it while i'm on the phone (laughs) i'm like yeah why and i went outside and he goes is it cold out i mean is that air fresh or you know i mean is it chilly air or what i'm like fuck you're on four yards there's no night yard bro yeah you know what i mean you're fucking that's it it's rap you know what i mean and to be able to walk outside and smoke a cigarette and fucking free cool air you know what i mean that's a blessing in itself because by all rights there's people that have done less charges less shit than me that aren't coming home you know i need to get back into reality sometimes myself man and and check myself it's hard too because I've become, like I said, freeanized or whatever, you know, I mean, Californianized. Just gratitude has gone out the window a lot. Um, and I have to check myself from time to time and just be grateful for where I am at. Yeah, you no, de- definitely. And, and I think this is a good segue into what I wanted to talk to you about because you have a successful YouTube channel and I've watched your content and I really, I really do enjoy it. I find it really interesting stuff. Um, Let's talk about how that came to be because it's definitely changed my life. Um, my channel probably has about a third of the subscriber base as yours, but even still, now that I have Patreon, I pay my bills 100% through my content. Um, I also have a book out, but you know, just through content that I create, I pay all my bills and I, I look at that as a huge blessing and I'm extremely grateful that I'm in that position. Um, my girl doesn't work. I have a son. I'm able to provide for my entire family just off content. That's, that's amazing. I certainly encourage a lot of other felons and people that have been to prison to try to do the same thing because it, it really is something. Um, it, it's really cool that we can monetize past life experiences because people that haven't been to prison find the shit fascinating because I'm sure it is, you know? Um, sure. And I want to know how it came to be with you. 
what you learned, what kind of um, advice you'd have for other people, what mistakes you've made, et cetera, et cetera. How did it start though? So <laughs> my boy, Big Herc, you know, um, he asked me a couple of years before I actually interviewed with him. You know what I mean? I was like, hey, he's all, hey, you want to interview? And I'm like, yeah, no. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't on the path that I'm on now either though. Um, and then finally when uh, it did come time, I had to ask permission. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we don't talk on camera is the first message I got. And I was like, man, I've already done all my shit. You know what I mean? I got a walk away pass. Pretty much I'm, you know what I mean? Like I, I was, I asked to go to NAAA or whatever it is, you know, cause uh, that's frowned upon in, in certain cards. You know what I mean? Like, uh, really? Really? I never heard that. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, Seriously? Yeah. They call it the hug a bug club, the rainbow coalition. You know what I mean? Like fucking, I'm in a hateful car inside. You forget, you know what I mean? You yeah. run head. Oh, so, oh, oh yeah. You oh, know what okay. I mean? Well, yeah. So yeah, I'm in a hateful <laughs> car. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then when I took, man, I have all the work I put in for us and fucking this and that, you know what I mean? Like fucking, I just want to be a dad now. You know, I want to be a grandfather or whatever the case is. I want to be that. I don't want to be this anymore. I don't want to be collecting taxes out here. I don't want, you know, I didn't want to do all that shit. And uh, finally I told them, man, I want to try and, you know, change somebody's life for the better. And they're like, go ahead. You know what I mean? Just don't reveal too much. Don't say anything you're not supposed to say, you know? I'm like, cool. So I told her, I was like, hey, they said, it. cool. You know what I mean? Go ahead. So I'd interviewed with them. And I guess that was a big fucking success on his channel. You know what I mean? Like, I was the, one of the most watched shows that he had going on. And uh, I interviewed with him and I interviewed with him and I interviewed with him. You know what I mean? I think I got like 17 interviews with her. Wow. So, wow that's, uh, that's a lot. Everybody was all like, Badger for president. And, you know, I was going through the comments all the time. And, you know, you fucking rat piece of shit, punk motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Reading all this shit. So my first thing to tell you is don't respond to those. Don't as hateful as you I posted. Feel I I posted my paperwork. And I was like, you know what, motherfuckers, I'm gonna post my shit here. Analyze my case. Here you go. Here's all the cases I've had. Boom. It's all on, right. it's on Patreon. Okay, but you told when nobody was around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's handwritten, yeah. but it's still yeah, still yeah, yeah. paper. Right. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on the paper. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I had done so many things on uh, Herc's channel that. Uh, Everybody would start your own channel, start your own channel. Right about then I was uh, being fired from my job. So, which I was uh, uh, a counselor at an IOP, intensive outpatient, but I ran the house. So I was the manager of the house and I had a sweet little lick, right? But they said I was uh, possibly sleeping with clients, you know, which there was no truth to that. So I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sleeping with clients, you know, what I mean? like they said I was, um, I wasn't, I was let go. Um, and some dude had told me, hey, bro, because I, I would don't know any of the other shit. I don't know how to, shit, how to even hook up a YouTube channel. And this dude gets me started. Um, you know, we, we agreed to go into business together. Basically, he, uh, he did great in the beginning, bro. He, he was very good with me in the beginning. He got me all set up. And uh, I was didn't want Herc to think that I was trying to do the same thing as Herc. You understand? I didn't want him thinking I was doing a prison channel. And I really wasn't. My channel is based more upon recovery, upon where you've been. You know what I mean? Just like a meeting. Where you've been and where you're at now and what, what it took to get there, you know? Uh, if you notice, any, almost everybody I bring on the channel they were either a piece of shit in some way or another, and they've turned their shit around. They're, you know, a member of society today. And that's what I wanted to show that it, you don't have to come out and go, I can't get a job. I'm an ex-con. You know what I mean? I've shown on here, I got a job with Local 33. You know what I mean? That's the movie industry out here. Like any job that I went after, I got. You know what I mean? I went with it full-fledged, and I didn't give up until I got that job. And I wanted to be working the movie industry. I went and got that job. I just wanted the ex-con that was coming out thinking, 
he's going to get a job ducket. You know what I mean? And it's going to be on his pillow when he gets home. That a you job, get off a job <laughs> ducket. Right? <laughs> Uh, but you got to get off your ass and go get what you want out here. Nobody's going to give you shit. That's what I wanted the channel to be about, you know, to let us know that when we come out and that's why I left all the negative comments up there. You know what I mean? All the calling me names, my paperwork's golden, bro. I walk any main line, you know what I mean? And I sure would hate to have to do that today because why I would become the real badger again. You know what I mean? The badger that I don't want to be, you know, like I have a name, bro. And, you know, I just always been Badger since the beginning of time, it seems like, you know, and that's, he wasn't always a nice guy, you know, and I've totally turned my shit around. I told you, you know, Bruce Lee philosophy, AA philosophy, I had to learn to become a man out here because I knew this much. I did not want to go back to prison, you know, and I wanted the next guy that got out to fucking that had to sofa serve or go to the GR office office and get a motel voucher to know that you didn't have to pick up dope or rob the next guy that comes into the hooker's room you know what i mean to to know that we could turn our shit around you know what i mean yeah it was fucking a long hard road to get here bro and my thinking was fucked up in the beginning i mean i was as institutionalized as they come you know i was I would cross the street if I seen me walking down the street back then, because you you know that aura that we put off when we come oh, yeah. out. Well, it, and it's it's women women can smell it, and and it can be sure. very. Um, can they're be, all over it. They're oh yeah oh yeah they can smell it on you. They're like oh my yeah. god I can smell you. Exactly. I almost look your dick. You're like yeah, oh. exactly. I can you know? shit. Right, exactly, uh, and uh, and but so women can smell it on you, but then men can smell it on you too, and not in a sexual way, in a very um threatened or threatened way, you know, threatened, way, yeah. threatened you know, it, like because you you care, dude. I like I'm a short little midget guy, but I I walk around like uh, I'm the most confident guy in the world, and I walk mm -hmm. like a convict. Everyone says that they're like, dude, you have the little strut where you like, yeah, you got you walk around like Joe Pesci, you know, and I'm it's you know, that's from prison. Um, so you started the channel. And I mean, Big Herc essentially opened the door for you. Big Herc's a good guy. I've been on his show. Um, I like Herc a lot. Um, what happened after that? I mean, when was that? It was a couple of years ago, you're saying? So, yeah, my channel uh, opened November in 2017. Wait, 2018. Yeah, so it's a little over a year. You know what I mean? That my channel has been open. This is a. Uh, what year is this? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, 20. It's the end 20. of the world. Okay, so yeah. Uh, November <laughs> 2018, I started the channel. Um, now, mind you, I have access to every ex-con in the Valley because most ex-cons ain't trying to go back to prison. So they're where? They go to the rooms Alcoholics Anonymous or <laughs> Narcotics Anonymous because 95% of them are dope fiends, you know what I mean? Dope landed them in prison one way or the other. Oh, and NA is definitely the convict. Right. I don't do Choice NA. over AA, yeah. right? A. You go to A. Okay, good. A is better, I think. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> not too much ego there. But yeah, I mean, it's... if I want to do NA, I go there because I need somebody to interview. <laughs> <laughs> that's, your, that's your fishing pond. For the channel, so, no, up. it's real shit though. You know, uh -huh. I can go there and pick up. You know, all the ex cons are there, so you know. And that I wanted my channel to be based on recovery and not just a uh, recovery of prison. I just wanted it to show people because I have a big pulling with the homeless, bro. I do a lot of shit with the homeless. You know, I go to Santa Monica and try and feed them. Most of them don't want food. But like I do shit like that. The one thing they'll always take, if anybody out there is trying to help them, they'll always take clean socks. You know what I mean? They love clean socks. But I do a lot I'm of not shit. even homeless and I love clean socks. I love <laughs> new socks. There's nothing but okay, go on. Sorry. No, no, yeah, it's true though. But uh like I was finding that I was wasting money buying going to Taco Bell and buying burritos and passing them out to the homeless down there. I ended up giving them more to uh, tourists <laughs> than anything because the homeless didn't want food so much. You know, most of them. Are, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So when I would, so then I got, I had a, me and a partner of mine had started, a, you know, paying for a bed. We were like, fucking, let's get people off the streets, man. If we're not gonna open a, a fucking sober living but let's get people off the streets so we went in halves on a bed in the beginning you know um 
And when I say that, what we do is we were paying for a, so one bed in a sober living home that was always ours. At any time, we could fucking bring somebody and put them wow, in. Wow, that re- that's a really good idea. That's really cool of you. I've that's never heard of someone doing that. Super cool, yeah. I still do that. Um, and it's hard. Right now, it's going to get even harder, you know, because yeah. that, YouTube is mostly paid for that bed, you know, since I've been, since he backed out, that, you know, YouTube has picked up the slap for that because he backed off after we we're we committed to a year and i've been doing it way more than a year now so we got the receipts to prove it uh, <laughs> if there is people always ask oh my god you're trying to get free narcan to people we want to see receipts it's like right. All right. <laughs> well, me and her have fought about that several times too because she's like hey man that's a car payment you know what i mean that's a car payment with insurance you know and like I know, but you know, like it's my way of giving back, you know. And it helps you stay sober, right? I mean, that's what it helped. Whenever I help people, that's I tell people all the time. I'm like, I help people because I'm a selfish piece of shit dope fiend. I help people to feel better about myself because I've done so much bad shit. I pay a karmic debt, man, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. However, I'm doing it, I'm making the world a better place. It doesn't matter why I'm doing it because it makes me feel better and it keeps me. That's up. right. You feel that fucking inner void, man. Yeah, you know? for Plus, sure. Mm-hmm. It. It puts me in a position to have to deal with the homeless too a lot because I, I like to focus on the vet. You know what I mean? If they're out there, I like to pull vets in. But so many people, bro, I've taken, pulled them off the streets, got them a little haircut, and fucking brought them a couple top ramens and put them in a bed, gave them, let them shower and shit. And then the fucking next thing you know, they're thanking me off their ass. They're in their own bed. You know what I mean? And I can bring someone else and put them in that bed again. And, it just, it's a never ending vicious cycle for them because, you know, they're doing great now. They got a haircut, they're fucking got a little phone selling job or whatever. And life's now beginning for them. You know, they're not waiting for a job ducket. They had to get off their ass. And if they're not in a step work, Good job. you know, <laughs> the step work is what I push the lie. I'll kick you out for not doing step work before I'll kick you out for not having a job yet. You know, I don't pay for that bed for that one individual for the whole time they're there, bro. So you you're I mean? you're a twelve step guy, then obviously. I mean, that's oh, yeah. you, yeah. you're in the program then yourself. Yeah. Yes. yes, I've worked the steps. I still work the steps. Do ten, eleven, and twelve every day. You know, um, we do thirteen. Yeah. Me and my wife just do the. 13. Yeah, that's no. got a lot of trouble, my boy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I know. That's why I went to the program in the first place. It was all the females. I'm not going to lie. That's what lured me to the program. Pretty soon I was going for the healing that I was getting out of it, you know, because I didn't know how to function out here, bro. And I was going back to prison within any short time frame if I hadn't have gone to the program and learned how to live out here. And simply by watching other people and mimicking them in the beginning. You know I mean? Just like you do when you hit a new yard. Just if like you're a convict, you, yeah. if you were a true fucking, and you, I mean, I don't need to tell you this. I'm telling this to my audience. Yeah. If you're a true convict, this is what you do. You hit a prison and you don't go beat up the biggest person right yeah. when you see him. You don't do it in the movies, dude. Oh, oh, that, that six foot eight black guy. I'm going to go stab that fool just to prove a point. No, you don't do that. That's not what you do. Yeah. You go and you don't fuck it. You introduce yourself. I'm Ryan from Santa Barbara. Sure. How you doing? Respectful. Hands, uh, squeeze somebody's hand like a man, firm handshake, eye contact. But then you go back, recoil, and you observe everything so that you can start figuring out how the place around you is working. And if you don't do that, you are setting yourself up for danger. You need to be aware of what's going on. It's the exact same thing on the street. We'll teach you how to fucking pay attention. You know what I mean? If you ain't paying attention, you're that's right. Where, so that's interesting that that's how you do it in the free world. That you went to NA and you started just be doing the same shit you learned in prison. Just being an intuitive yeah. convict, knowing what's up. And you start watching people, seeing, okay, well, that guy's here because he wants to fuck that broad right there. That right. broad's here because she wants to get fucked by those two dudes at the same time. Right. That dude's gay, but he's not admitting it. That dude's doing this, but oh you know what? All these people are off drugs and nobody's going to jail right now. I'm going to watch what they're doing. Oh, the ones that are actually doing the steps are the right. one that are actually happy. I'm going to be like them, you know, it makes total exactly sense. What I did. Exactly what I did, you know? Um, yeah. You know, there's a lot of that 13 step shit going on there too. And that's why I went in the beginning was to chase tail, you know? And eventually I was like, man, 
If I don't start, how do I deal with this situation? And I learned in the rooms, I would go to the guy that was being successful in life, not in work or whatever, but in life and say, you know, Hey man, how do you handle this situation? My girl did this. You know what I mean? I was thinking of killing her, but, or him, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's not how we do it. You know what I mean? You know, so I was taught, a lot of stuff through there and that's why I, I do push the rooms don't get me wrong there's predators in the rooms there's all that you know what i mean everything you can learn in the rooms as well but there's also people you you'll see a table of people that are just humble you know what i mean you everybody in the room is a fucking tool to me a perfect tool either the jackass that's running his mouth all the time doing whatever he's a tool i look at him and go all right i don't want to be him right then there's the guy who's humble. He pulls up in a cool little fucking, you know, 67 Mustang. And he's just all cool, you know, just whatever. And he's humble. He's like, he, hey, did you need a ride home? You know what I mean? I'm going to stop and get coffee. Did you want something to eat? You know, like they know when you're new. So people hit me up like that and started treating me with a little bit of love, man, you know. And I try and play that forward, you know, because I – my thing was, what can you get from me? What do you have that I could benefit from? You know, that's me in nature. That's natural. But that's, you know, that's not how I try and live today. And well, and, and again, that's stuff that you, you know, when you're like, well, I had to do it. You know, you have to do what you have to do to survive in prison. And, and part of that is eating. You know, simple things that people don't, don't. But everything in prison is a different language than what's out here. Yeah. Everybody has a different intention. You have not. You have to learn how to read intentions, and that's why. And I know that you're a good poker player. I'm a. I'm a fantastic poker player. I learned that shit in prison, because I learned how to read people. You play and the people, not the cards. You play the people, not the cards. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, we. You know what? We should do a collaborative video on poker, on how to start a table in prison, but how to play prison poker all the strategies that I've talked about and people are like, I want that. We should do that. For sure. Soon. For sure. Yeah. We'll do more shit together. We'll see how, you know, we're, we do for each other's channel. I'm sure we'll do great. Plus I, we'll chop it up. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll check in. Um, not, well, not that kind of checking in, but we will check in with each other. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I want to ask one last thing. Um, so now that, and it's not, I, I didn't realize that you were doing that and getting people to bed right now. Um, I just lost one of my best friends, uh, last November. Really? He was like a brother to me. I mean, it was one of like three of my closest friends. Um, and that I've never had something affect me like that. Like it really fucked me up. And, um, you know, he died from addiction related stuff and uh you know with respect to his family i don't want to go too into it but he's not with us anymore because of opiates and um so i want to start i, I started a non-profit with sinister and he donated uh we raffled off one of his pieces the other day an actual painting not a print and um raised some money but what i'm trying to do right now is get narcan to everybody that needs it in the country because i think that everyone should have it i think that uh, So, like, I have that, and I'm not shooting heroin right now. I you know? got one in my backpack. <laughs> but everybody in the country should have Narcan nasal spray. This is two doses. So on, the east you know. coast, on the East Coast, they cost $3. That exact box right there costs $3. Here in California, with insurance, it's $150. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We box. talk about that. Yeah. And they give them away uh, needle exchanges, methadone clinics, exchange, but if you're buying them, them, yeah, it's 150 bucks. I talk about that on my channel. Bucks, yeah. I want to start giving these to everyone. Cause there's a, a real need for it on my channel. A lot of my channel shockingly is uh, addicted okay, to drugs or, or, or in recovery, you know? And if my friend Paul had this at his house, he'd still be with us. I mean, his, his fiance found him, you know, maybe 20 minutes after he'd gone out, by the time the ambulance came 10 minutes later, it, it was like right at that point where he was still in respiratory arrest and he could have saved him if they had, if, if she had had this there, he'd still be alive. So I feel like it's, it, you know, not too ambitious of an effort, raise some money, provide free Narcan for people that ask for it, start with that, but eventually get corporate sponsors. I want right. to get that in every... From the gate. 
Every Mc- bullshit, man. Go straight to Narcan and be like, look, this is what I'm doing out here in California. You know what I mean? Because it's not as easily accessible as it is on the East Coast. I want to make sure that Narcan gets out to everybody imaginable. What will you donate to us? Yeah, well, that's that, and that that's the strategy. It's like we just did that raffle. We did it, I don't know, um, right in the beginning of the month. So, you know, AdSense doesn't pay us until next April 21st or uh, April 21st is when we get paid for the raffle. But when we get that, we're going to start a non- did it through AdSense? What's that? You did it through AdSense? What, the the fundraiser? The money? Yeah, I should have done through GoFundMe. I know. Stop. I know. Stop. We've had this conversation. Sinister calls me every day. He's like, you're stupid. We could have been saving lives earlier. We, But we are sending them out right now. But it's just the problem well, is. It's not that. It's just how much money they take off of us. Oh, yeah. They take, what, 30% or some crazy shit? Or is it more uh, than that? It's, or, yeah, it's more than that, bro. It's more than that. Uh, I think I get 60 cents on the dollar. Yeah, well, it, but see, the reason we did it, it was a live raffle. A lot of that was because Sinister, he's only been out, what, a year or something? He, um, it, a lot of that was to get him more out, out, there. out there a little bit more oh, yeah. uh, because he's like catering to celebrities and stuff. Like he doesn't have, he, he doesn't have like the grassroots following. So I wanted to get him a little bigger. And then um, for sure, we're doing another one though soon. We're going to raffle off five paintings and I sent them out. Um, to everyone already so or the prizes painting was one of them so they're out hey what's up Badger's wall who are we talking about oh that's sinister that's, <laughs> that's a sinister tv spot chair no oh it's a it's a spray pan John wick collection right that's right yeah that's that's you dope know? sinister's got some cool stuff so yeah I, i'm hey, a fan I of can help work. you with a lot of that too bro i'm not oh. We could talk about that on the side, but I mean, and I'm great with them, them upper guys in them corporate offices to fund whatever, you know what I mean? Get boxes and boxes of that shit for free. Cool. Well, I mean, it's definitely something that I would love to include you in, especially because you have a history of addiction. So you understand it, you know, that what I, the person I was when I was a junkie is not the person that I am right now. I'm not, I'm not, I got, and I kicked Suboxone recently. Like I'm not even on that now. And um, I, a lot of the, the reason that I did that, it was because, well, first of all, I was abusing them. I was injecting them into my fucking neck. And, you know, I tell my wife, I'd be like, it's just, it's a, it's a fucking prescribed medication. She's like, I'm pretty care. sure you're, I'm pretty sure you're not prescribed to slam Suboxone in your neck. I'm like, you don't know that. My doctor gave me a special note, you know, right. and uh, eventually I had to stop it. But part of the reason is I was just over not being in touch with my pain. You know, I was masking it. And I, regardless, you know, Suboxone saves life and it's a great crutch for when you need it. But there's a point where you don't need it anymore and you shouldn't be doing it if you're using it to escape, you know, and that's exactly what I was doing. I was using it to heal. Now I'm off it. And you know what? I've had to face my pain. I've had to face the pain of losing my friend Paul and how much it's hurt me. But that's real life. You know, you can't, if you run, what does social distortion say? You can run your whole life, but not go anywhere. That's what I've been doing my whole fucking life. And I'm over it. Anyway, Badger, (laughs) I have, you agree? Um, I love social D. Oh, I know. Really? I, 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 did, I, I don't know. The 67 Mustang and the flannel. I was, I'm shocked. You like social distortion? Really? Absolutely, <laughs> What's up? <bro. laughs> I did too. I saw him in um, Pomona uh, for New Year's a couple years, a few, well, a couple years ago, like five years ago or something. And uh, it, was, it was amazing. It was, I love that crowd. Anyone that goes to a social D is that's like our people, right? Like, that's right. our crowd right there. Right. You know, like I, I fit yeah, in with those well. people. You know, that's my shit right there. TSOL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many of their shows, fucking Misfits. uh, You know, I mean, just. No, I love the Misfits. I got a Misfits tattoo on my knee. What can we see? I got one too. Oh, oh yeah. She's right there. We're all going on our legs. (laughs) That's how we end it. Hey, bro, let's show each other. Let's show our legs off. Let's show our legs. Let's show some skin. Hey, Hey, it was. Um, an absolute pleasure having you on. Let's do it again For soon. Sure. Yeah. Um, if the world doesn't come to an end, let's 
try to start saving some lives with Narcan. I think I want to get a bed at a half at a sober living too. That's a fun. It's really, it's really cool that you do that, man. Have on this one with me. It's killing me. He raises the rent from six hundred to seven fifty, bro. Seven fifty. So how much does that mean I have to spend a month? Three seventy five. I can do that. I can do that. Seriously? Are you committing? I'll commit to it. Take you there and show you to it. It's live. It's live. I can't. I can't take it back now. God, my wife's gonna be like, "You're such a piece of shit. You're always donating to every fucking day." She's always mad. I'm like, I'm like, babe, like, look what I did. Like, I'm trying to get Ross Albright out of prison. I don't know if you know who that is. He started the Silk Road thing, and he's doing life in prison for pretty much running a fucking website on the dark web where he could buy drugs. Oh, the uh, highway thing or yeah, Silk Silk Road, yeah, and. uh, Yeah, I donate every month to get that dude out of prison because I truly believe he doesn't believe to have a fucking life sentence. When all these senators that just had insider trading because they knew the coronavirus was going to collapse the economy. Oh, and they're not going to jail? What what the fuck? We're not going to forget about that, guys. And I don't ever want people... I I root for the bad guys in movies, (laughs) but... I'm not rooting for the senators that are fuck Hell you no. for all the time that we've done in prison for your fucked up laws and you're doing stuff like that to normal people. Nope. You need to go and to now jail. Now it's changed to where some of the shit that people have gone to prison for are no longer fucking prisonable offenses. Yeah. The fuck? Nuts. 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 It's all crazy. It's bananas. All right. Well, it's due on the fifth. <laughs> yeah. Well, yep. Um, uh, hey, write me a store list. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. I'll, hey, I'll green dot you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how they're doing shit. That shit wasn't around when I was there. Oh, that's a new thing? Yeah, they're doing yeah, that now. None of that shit was going on. Bro. I mean, I don't know. Allegedly, they're doing that. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hey, so where can we find you, OG Badger, for the um, probably the three or four people on my channel that don't subscribe to your channel? Uh, where, where do- heavy hitters, man. You know what I mean? Don't do be your- shot. Do your huh? do your signature um, heavy hitters thing, and then I'll do my palabra. Huh? It to happen. Some people need it to happen, but heavy hitters make it happen. Nothing but love and respect. Shout out to you. Thank yeah. you for having me on your channel, my boy. You know, Re- respect and to just, you. And, and it's about the bed. Get in touch with me, and you know what I mean. Th- thanks for the three hundred and seventy-five dollar cost that I've just incurred. Expensive video. <laughs> Don't tell my my chick, okay? That's between us. All right. Hey, and I'll say one last thing. Thank you everyone for checking us out. Like, comment, subscribe, check out OG Badgers. I'll put his link in the com- in the pinned comments and I'll close it how I always do. Palabra. Thanks you guys. Tune in, man. Palabra. <laughs>